they work. So uh, I brought all this so she can see that she ain't here. She'll have to watch the video. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Is that crane chef? No, that's cam chef. <laughs> Of course, David don't know it. Russ, you just want to know what a lifter was? This is a lifter. The guy said you had a bad one. I don't know. He had a non-existent one. Yeah. Is that what he's telling me? Yeah. <coughs> okay, I got all these parts to show. All right. A cam pushes the lifter with a load, which pushes the push rod, which pushes the rocker on. You need another hand to do Yeah, I know it. <laughs> well, see, Kathy didn't know what it was, so she wanted me to explain to her what it was. Which is these rocker arms which sit on top of the head, and uh, when it pushes up, opens the valves, lets the air in and exhaust out. All right, my tech session was supposed to be for just valve adjustments, which she wanted to know uh, what everything was. Okay, I lost my thing. All right, on this particular one, I got uh, adjusted two right and two wrong. I was going to let people didn't know what they feel like, what they are. The way I adjust them is David, he tells me to adjust it on seven. Book said six, so I just don't see. So you do six. <laughs> All right, the way I just mine. Got your heads up or new bells on there. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. All right, what you need when you adjust the valve is a good end screwdriver and a 13 wrench. If the nut is 13, sometimes they're 15. All right, uh, let's see. I think it's right. Yeah, that's right. That's too tight. Okay, what this one is, it's too tight exhaust valve. Exhaust valve too tight, it can burn it. It will burn it. Then you have a bad day. All right, the way you adjust it is you loosen the nut, the jam nut. And the way I do it, I don't know how Dave would do it, but I would do it this way. I set my filler gauge in and run the they tap it down to the gauge and feel it, just touch it. And I take my jam nut and whip my fingers and turn it. So it kind of locks it up. Then you hold you hold uh, the wrench through the screwdriver like this. And just hold it, don't turn it or nothing. And just pull the nut tight. You see? And you got you got a good feel. You can feel both sides. And the way I check it is, I take seven and check it, and seven won't go through it. So you got it on six. And then you got a five, which is too loose. So you know you got it exactly on six. That's the way I do it. I know I'm a four man mechanic on a two mechanic job. So I don't know. anyway, this one's right. This one's right now. That one's right. That one's too tight. See? You hear it? There's a difference in the sound. Correct, Dave? You ain't saying a thing. <laughs> All right. The way you check this one being too tight is, see, number five is too tight to go in. And six, Barely will go in it. So you need to adjust it too. Same thing, just, just loosen it up. Stick your number six under it with your fingers. Roll it down till it touches. Then lock it with your finger. That way the tap it don't move. Just hold it, don't turn it. And lock it down. And you got a good feel right there. That's the way you do it. 
and all this other stuff is, it just shows you what lifts these right here for your valves to work. And these are your valves. You got exhaust valve, which this is really bad, and the intake, which is really pretty. And the exhaust valve is one gives you most trouble. If got your it. rocker arm is loose on the shaft, mm -hmm. on on your uh, on your adjustment, tell them what that does to the valve. It beats the end of the valve off, and it's not allowing it to fully open. When the rock arm pushes down on the on the valve, when the push rod comes up and rocks the rocker down, if you've got too much of a gap, that's not allowing your intake yep. or exhaust to it, open all the it, way. You will not get the gas and air mix mixture on the intake that you need to run, and if it's too tight on exhaust, it will build up the heat on the cylinder and burn your valve. And uh, this particular head, Mr. Uh, Nick give to me and it shows what a loose spark plug does. It blows it out like a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> and these these rockers uh, came off my other engine and they got swivel ends, which is absolutely the best, I think. Because they're just ball type and they work really good. On, on these. This is just regular Volkswagen tappets on these. But this and I brought these to show it that they got the swivel ends. And all Volkswagens except for Type 4s is solid, right Dave? Type 4s hydraulic? Except for Mike's. His is hydraulic. And these are solid. And this is what that guy said that you went bad on yours. He's cut, he's cut the whole bottom off of that. Yeah. If you look at this and this one's peated, this and this one's pretty peated, but I've got some real good ones I didn't want to bring. Somebody might put them in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> and your cam, if you look at it cams, the loaves gets wore on the loaf part and that ruins your valves and all that stuff. So uh, I got three of these cams which is in pretty good shape. And this is a Four rivet cam. Ex explain what duration and lift is now that you got a lobe out there. Duration and lift. I have no idea. I told you I'm just a fool. No, you know what it is. Cause you told me. <laughs> it's just how long how long the valve stays open and how high it raises. And that's done by the length of the, the lobe. Length and of the length of the lobe. Yeah. The peak up at the top, right? Now I got I got <laughs> one cam at the house that's got. A wide low and it's really high. It gives you a good sound on the end of it. Is that for a performance engine? Is that yeah. Right. Yeah. It's more important to have lift than it is duration. No it's duration. Like duration. Yeah. And that duration is how long the valve will be in the open, open position. Yeah. And all this right here is very important. Push rods, if they're bent. Get rid of them. Get a new one. See, that was getting straight. The ones I used in this one, that's in here, was really bad, bent, wore out. So that's the reason I cut them in half. See, these are real good. So you keep all the good parts you can find, especially if it says Volkswagen on them. So these springs, I checked these springs. They come off of a single port, and they're the same height as they spoke to be when they cut new. So these are real good springs. And it's, it's I guess uh, the keepers that holds the spring is right here. These keepers goes in these grooves on the valves. And that's what, that's the only thing that holds that spring in place. Hmm. It's amazing. Just that little piece of metal holds this big spring in place. Does, it, does that ever present a problem for you, you think? Rarely. Yeah, rarely, but they do. Yeah, unless the end of it breaks off or 
something like that. Most of the time the valve breaks at the, the exhaust valve breaks right here. Do the springs never need replacing? Is that what they call drop a valve when it breaks? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what. You'll know it. Yeah. 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 Total You'll damage. <laughs> Total yeah. damage. Yeah, my dad's car, that's what happened with his Volkswagen. Because I was driving and it happened. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many RPMs that thing's going for it drop. <laughs> you have many efforts. You have the head break off from an exhaust valve at 75 miles an hour going down a mountain. There's not a whole lot left to the top of the piston. Well, see, a lot of times when they break off, they turn sideways and it busts, it busts everything in it. And I had one that when I took it apart after it busted, it was inside the piston. It was still jamming in piston on the side of it and the head. It looked like you took a chisel and busted it all to pieces. But it was still jammed in the piston. Mm. That beat all over saying, you know, usually it breaks the piston and the rods and all that, but it it looked like you took a chisel on the bottom side of that head and just just give it all she had. Just real quickly, uh, for next month's tech session, Williams is going to be doing it again. He's going to back to do back to back here, uh, but he's going to be going over the emergency toolkit that you need to carry in your aircraft Volkswagen. So be sure to be here. For That's that. a good. There's a certain things you really need to carry in a two box that really will help you on the road, like points. And so we're going to we're going to cover that next month, being November, yeah. right before Christmas, maybe. Some Christmas presents might come out of that. You know. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be next month. But anybody, any question how to do, redo these, these right here? No, I, it's well, a lot of fun about. laying on your back on the concrete. You well, know. you know, it's easier to do show right here than <laughs> it is laying on gravels. Yeah, don't don't yeah. take your head off and mount it on the board and, and do that. You know. Yeah. You yeah. One, one thing I would like to add, in case somebody tries to do it and don't know, you have to have the engine in the right position for each valve to do it. Don't yeah, you? well, you know what? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, turn, it, you turn the engine backwards. It, it has to be on the top dead center for the, uh, the compression stroke for the valve you're adjusting. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Uh, the book, the How to Keep Your Volkswagen Alive, has a real good section in there about how to do that. But, you know, it's hard to bring a whole engine in here to do this, you know. <laughs> this is Rusty about... Rusty will do it for you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bring the car and put it in the parking lot. <laughs> this this was about the easiest way I could show you how on the rocker arms and the valves and adjustment. This is mine and Lamar's idea when we were sitting around. So yeah, and thanks to uh, Nick for letting us have that head and then for William yeah. mounting it because that's something we'll be able to keep. Sacrifice. Yeah, we'll yeah. use that over again. <laughs> Sacrifice a bad head. <laughs> We could use it for a spark plug chain contest, but it's just got a hole blowed out. With it. Hey, well, if you look at that hole, you well, think, wow. Is there something you can put in there to re-thread that? What's that called? Not, heated well, coal. Heated coal. coal. We might demonstrate that sometime. Well, this yeah, right here. a KD bushing. Yeah, it this one's got a KD. You can do it the head on the car. This one's it's got a, a two, bushing in it. It's a two-stage two tap. And then the original thread on the bottom, or try to trace the original thread there. Then it has a reamer, and it taps it out bigger. And you take this KD bushing, which you can buy at Sears anywhere, screw it on the end of the spark plug. It's, it's this has got a bushing in it, Dave, it on this side. But this one right here is beyond a bushing. <laughs> Yeah, that one is. <laughs> oh, well. That, that one is. Yeah. <laughs> That's a I think I'm taking one of them big old Ford plugs. <laughs> uh, I think this one would almost <clears throat> take a inch. I ah, love J.B. Wells. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that one's going to be repaired. J.B. Wells in there. Thank you.